Soul Sunday. And the topic today I'm sharing with you is about relationship. My name is Daryl and I come from New Zealand and I trained as a journey practitioner in 2002 and again in 2005. It seems to me that we have relationships with mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, our children and extended family, and of course we have relationship with business and business, with our you know with business leaders and with employees. And look, I even have a relationship with my dog. I love my dog, and that's the easy relationship. But what I have concluded about relationship is that to be conscious in it, my relationship depends on how self-connected I am. In other words, how is my relationship with me? To share with you a little bit about me, I fell in love when I was 18. Of course, we were friends, then lovers, and then married. You know, it happens quickly. And I rapidly discovered that neither of us had skills to help us resolve conflict. You know, we, we couldn't actually deal with the hard stuff. How does your family do conflict? Well, how does mine? My family pretended conflict didn't happen. In fact, as children, we weren't allowed to know. My mum's anger was chilling and isolating and pretty cold. As a child, I would have described it as the atmosphere went black in our family. Whereas my dad did volcanic explosions. Um, you know, they would come out of the blue and my reaction was I, was, I would freeze or go numb. So it seems to me that anger in our family wasn't allowed. It wasn't acceptable because my parents longed for us to learn, be nice, be happy. That was their mantra for us. But what was the outcome? Well, the outcome for me was that, you know, I learned to drift off into the clouds. I disassociated from my body. I was called a dreamer many times. I learnt to suppress my feelings, to swallow them. But how many times can you do this into your body? I learnt to desensitise my body where I didn't even feel my sensations. So I was denying you know, that I even had any. They didn't even register. I certainly learned how to distance myself from myself by staying in the mind and blaming or, or shaming somewhere else, but taking my attention out there rather than in here. I denied my own anger, my own fear. In fact, I didn't even really know it was there. In my marriage, um, this is where it first became evident. We, Between us, we didn't know how to you know, manage um, to talk about the tough stuff. In fact, what my husband would do, he would crack a joke. And whenever I wanted to talk about something that mattered to me and I wanted to resolve something, he would use humour. And to be frank, he was very funny and I would end up laughing with him. The first year, uh, I remember digging furiously in the garden. There was a lot of energy behind that spade. <sighs> And I'd laugh, I, I sort of occurred to me that I had found a way of releasing the build-up of energy in my body. Obviously, many years of frustrations. Many times I, I attempted that serious conversation with my husband. And he deflected it with his own awkwardness. You know, it was uncomfortable. And he would deflect it with a joke. But, of course, one day... I just, I lost it. I snapped. I actually felt this huge energy come up in my body. It, was, it came out of nowhere. And I felt an impulse to stab him. 
Lucky for me, there was no knife nearby. And of course, lucky for him. <clears throat> but so many um, others find themselves in prison for a violent attack that erupted out of them from seemingly nowhere. But for me, this was a defining moment. The energy both shocked me and enabled me. I literally woke up. So what did I know about this? I, you know, I was, I was, um, I was aware that the person who had the feeling had the problem. Well, I sure had a feeling, and I recognised therefore the problem was mine. I also realised that I had a five percent chance of changing the other person and a 95% chance of changing me. So I sat with two questions. What is this energy inside of me that so scared me? And the other question was I had, how do I find a way to talk about what matters to me so that I'm heard? My marriage did dissolve. But how could I be successful if I was disconnected from myself and I didn't have some basic communication tools like so many? And so how was my second relationship of 27 years different from my first? Well, I made it my business to change. I had to change me. You know, they say that when the student is ready, the teacher appears and magically Brandon's book showed up for me. You know, it, it resonated on every level and it represented hope for me. I poured my heart into the practitioner's program. You know, I was discovering my disowned parts, my shadow side. I was facing all the parts of me that were ashamed or angry or scared or sad. Some of these parts I'd never even known were there. But I was committed to meet all these parts. You know, some of them were denied, some of them were unconscious. Do you know what was extraordinary? My health completely improved. I'd been sick or unwell a lot of my life. All the exhaustion left. You know, I was depressed at so many times, I had lots of illnesses, I suddenly felt an incredible change in my physicality, in my health. Well, what a gift that, that is. Secondly, I began to become more aware of my emotions and my sensations. Hallelujah, I was reconnecting with me. You know, this gave me the tools to heal myself. What a joy. I was finally empowered. And my commitment to myself was such that I made it an hour's appointment with myself weekly to do Brandon's physical journey or emotional journey, just by his CD. And gradually I changed. Obviously I shared with others as well and did swaps. But I believe me, I had a powerful prayer. So today in my relationships, I've grown and my hope is that I take responsibility for my reactivity. You know, I don't want to pour it over others. I don't want to suppress it and, and, and contain it. So what do I do? This has been a process for me of growing consciously. And of course I fail at times, I'm a human being. But the, you know, the growth of my autonomous self is something I can celebrate and is expanding. And I, I, you know what's wonderful is I can share from an I message, you know, talking about my experience rather than a you experience, a you message, which points the finger. My intention is to find a way forward together, you know, so that can work for both you and me. So I'm looking for a win-win solution instead of perhaps my old way of being, it's my way or the highway. So 
I want to share with you about a time that I, you know, that I first used a, a three-step tool that I learned in the journey. I felt really angry. I felt reactive. I noticed my mind blaming and shaming quietly within. I raced outside and I dived onto the grass and rolled onto my back. Yes, I wanted to take responsibility for what was going on in me. First of all, I noticed my monkey mind. Of course, it's trying to control the situation. It's, it's, it has its way with me. And my head is full of judgment and blame. So I acknowledged my thought. Hi there. I see you. And the second step is what is the impact on my body? And so I can come down on the inside and go, what is my feeling? What is my... You know, what, am I, what is my emotion here in this moment? And this enables me to refocus from the neck down. The third step. Where do I feel this emotion in my body? And I actively look for it. I become curious and explore. Where is this feeling? You know, it might be like a knot or a... A butterfly or it might be a churning <clears throat> it might be heat, hot or cold it might be ever so tiny but being curious I could generally locate something and of course my mind is so strong it says yes but <gasps> back to the three-step process notice the thought acknowledge it gentle with it. Come back down to the body. Notice my feeling. And then of course notice my sensation. You know lying on the earth seems to give me the grounding I need to drop through these layers of feelings. And I really lie there until you know, I just surrender, to be frank. I surrender to the cocktail on the inside and just allow. Until I'm spent and I come out the other side of emotional pain. Because I, I've honestly learned that if I open into the emotion, there I will find peace. And I have absolute faith in that. And trust. So to those of you who have experienced the journey, I mean, you will know this process of dropping through the layers. We've all learnt it in an emotional drop through. And deliciously and magically, the process gives me the space for a new possibility and sharing from a, an open space. I'm self-connected and I can feel empowered and I can use other tools to help me communicate freshly and on, with honour. Yes, yeah, so the power is in my hands to make my choices. I've learned to self-connect. Hallelujah. I've learned how to communicate in a way that honours me and honours the other. You know, healthy and conscious communication within relationships is another whole topic on its own. And there is, I use a framework in how I connect with my husband so that it is life-giving communication. I mean, isn't this what we all want? To be truly heard without fear of another's reactivity and to really know we matter? It was what was important for me. I mean, what can be more magical than accepting the other exactly as they are and enabling me to be me and you to be you? I believe relationship can create partnership. 
And in my experience, when we are within partnership, we all win. And so if you have any questions or any comments, they are so welcome. Meanwhile, have a wonderful week and may grace be with you. Thank you.